See then that he walked certainly not as fools but as wise. Remember, remembering the time because the day are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is the excuse, but be filled with the Spirit. Thank the Lord for being here today. That's your heart, Elmo. It is good to be back to the house of the Lord this morning. Be much in prior for the service uh, here today. We just allow the Lord to do a mighty work. He wants to do a mighty work. And pray that we'd not be a hindrance, but a help. But we're going to start back over here in the book of Acts, where we left off our, a couple of weeks ago. In chapter 15, uh, I'll read the verse uh, 36 down through 41, and then we'll come back and look at these here just a little bit closer. As we see here, how uh, <clears throat> prior to this, how that uh, some have been coming in after Paul and Emma <coughs> preaching saved by grace and telling them, well, you've been saved by grace, but you're going to have to keep the law off so be circumcised and have them went up to Jerusalem and the church and met with the members of the church there with the, the overseers of the church there in Jerusalem and then discussed the matter and agreed on the, uh, uh, what to uh, instruct the brethren in. So they come back here to Antioch and report it about the good news there. And now as we see here uh, in uh, verse 36, and some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, let's go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them into the work. And the contention, and the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder, one from another. So Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas and departed, being writ, recommended by the brethren to, of the, unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Sicily, confirming the churches. So we see the situation that's taking place here that have it uh, uh, in verse 36. Uh, uh, we, they've tired here just a little while here at Antioch. They've come back uh, from Jerusalem, their first missionary journey. Paul and Barnabas is ending. They went to Jerusalem, uh, met the council up there. Now they've come back to Antioch. They've reported to the church and to the brother there. And as we see here, that they've been there a few days or a few weeks, I don't know, just for a certain time. It wasn't long because as we see right here, uh, uh, Paul, he didn't use this place in Antioch to, uh, my friend, just a place to be anchored down. Uh, it was a launching place for him. He was going around. He was an evangelist. He was going to go preach the word. So he told Barnabas, he said, hey, let's go over here uh, and go visit back with the brethren uh, and confirm them as we see here, see how they're doing. <laughs> he didn't, and, you know, that's where the church, I'm afraid today, uh, as we see here, that uh, we see a lot of people saved uh, and then we forget about them, Andy. We don't uh, disciple them and, and encourage them. And, and uh, It says they're confirmed there in the, in the, in the latter verses there, as we see, uh, but that word, that means strengthen. So they need to be encouraged. They need to be 
and strengthened. They need to be uh, discipled in the Word of God, as we see here. And Paul, he didn't want to waste a lot of time, uh, but he wanted to get back out there uh, and see how they do as we look at that here. He said in verse 36, And some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the Word of the Lord and see how they do. Uh, that was Paul's heart. I'm going to read a few verses here in, in some of the letters that Paul wrote to, to the churches. And we know that some of the, these churches, these letters I'm getting ready to read here in it, uh, that Paul's not been there yet. But I want you to see, what I want you to see is Paul's heart. I mean, preach was in him. Love was in him. And as we see here, and we'll try to get back to the, this discussion between Barnabas and Paul here. They were both great men of God. They were both uh, called to preach the Word of God, uh, as we see here. And sometimes uh, in the church, there'll be some dis uh, the, the decisions that, that has to be made. That, well, you know, you say, well, who's right or who's wrong? I'm not saying Paul or Barnabas either one was wrong. And we'll look at some things that might kind of weighed on the situation. But I want you to look and see Paul's heart. What he wanted to do, he wanted to preach the Word of God. He didn't want to leave those uh, uh, that had just been saved uh, and to have the churches there had been established. He didn't want to leave them by themselves. He wanted to instruct them and make sure they were growing. Uh, as we see here over here, Mount Carmel this week, uh, uh, we see the last three weeks, I believe it was 34 souls saved. Uh, they were going to have a, they had to put it off till next Saturday on account of the Justin's funeral yesterday, but they're going to have a discipleship place next Saturday morning, starting at, I believe, at uh, uh, 8 o'clock, I think it is, over there at that church, and it'll, it'll go uh, maybe 10 o'clock, I ain't for sure. You can look online and see, but it's a discipleship place for all those souls that were saved, and it'll go up into the afternoon. Lunch will be provided, but they're not going to see them get saved and leave, just let them go. And that's where we fail a lot of times, churches. We don't encourage them. We don't disciple them and instruct them uh, 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 through the Word of God. And they need that. They're just babes in Christ. So they need that. We need that as we look at it. But we see here, Paul, he needed the church just as much as the church needed him. And let's look at that here this morning. Over here in Romans chapter 1. Let's go here. And I'll just read a few verses in some of these introductions here. As we look at this and see Paul's heart, uh, my friend this morning, uh, him a right, he loved the church, uh, uh, my friend this morning. Uh, Christ loved the church enough to give his life for it this morning. Uh, but we see here, he says in verse 1, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, and he's writing to those here, a uh, call to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which hath, uh, uh, which he had promised before by the prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship and obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom ye are also called of Jesus Christ. He's encouraging them. He said, to all that be it, being wrong, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace unto you, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. I, and my friend today, the people need to be encouraged in this. They need to be instructed in this. And he's writing to these folks here at Rome. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. I mean, it helps to, to encourage someone. Uh, a lot of times, Tyler, you know, they, they may be having a bad day or something, uh, and just a word of encouragement, just a little lifting up to, know, to let them know they're not in it alone. You know, you're not in this alone. I thank God for our church family. I thank God for my preacher friends this morning uh, and my friends this morning that encourage you. That your faith is spoken off throughout the whole world. Boy, I tell you what, they over here, and, and Paul's telling them, hey, I've heard about your faith out through the whole world. I mean, ain't that good to encourage them? Hey, for God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Uh, he's praying for them. Boy, it's good to know that we're just, uh, you know, but we're not off of COVID, church. <coughs> We'll see these uh, uh, precious souls get saved and, and we'll praise God for it. Been praying for them for a long time, but if we're not awful careful, we'll forget about them right there. It's the church's duty to disciple them this morning, to instruct them. I thank God this morning, I can give you this testimony this morning. 
Uh, 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 and when I got saved uh, the next week, I would start coming to church here at Sweet Gum. Sweet Gum encouraged me. Yeah. Those old saints of all, I mean, they encouraged me. They gave me a job to do. They helped me. Amen. And the Lord used us. I thank God for that. Amen, story. brother. The Lord used us. But Paul said, I make mention of you always in my prayers. That's, that's good for that soul to know. Hey, he's praying for me. This great man of God, this man, he's praying for me. Making request if by any means now at length I might have a, 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 a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. So I will come see you. For I long to see you, verse 11, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. You hear what Jesus is saying? Now I may impart to you some, uh, to the end that you may be established. Uh, and you can read about them over in chapter 12 book of Romans. But here, we, we see here, we're looking at Paul's heart. He needed the church just as much as the church needed him. And that's the way it is with us today, uh, my friend. We're not in this alone. That is, uh, that I may be comforted together with you by the uh, mutual faith, both of you and me. Now I would uh, not have you ignorant, brethren, that, that oft times I purposed to come unto you, but was let uh, uh, hitherto, and in other words, he was hindered, uh, that I might have some uh, uh, delay, that, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. Uh, so we see here, uh, there should be some fruit. You know, people get saved, uh, and I, you know, a lot of times they, they, they get saved, and, and if we're not awful careful, we'll not disciple them, but sometimes we do disciple them, but still, there'll be some fruit. These spiritual gifts, and we all have different gifts uh, that the Lord has given us, and we should be using them, but you'll see fruit. Uh, you'll see that, uh, my friend, today, uh, in their life today. But he goes on. So much is it. I, listen to what he says right here in verse 14. Uh, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that uh, are at Rome also. I mean, he said, I'm ready. God, uh, I'm a, as we see here, and Paul's told Barnabas back there in chapter 15, or verse 36, hey, let's go, Barnabas. Let's go back and check on them. Let's go see how they do. That's what it said there in the last part of verse 36. See how they do. Check on them. Make sure they're still a, a strong, a growing in the Lord. Let's look at another one over here, uh, my friend. First Corinthians uh, chapter one. I'm gonna go over here. I'm just wanting you to see Paul's heart for the church and for the people this morning uh, as we look at this year. Paul uh, writing these letters, concerned about them. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ to the will of God and uh, some uh, and uh, suffers of our brethren and to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all the. Uh, in, that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord both theirs and ours grace be unto you and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ uh, so they see he's encouraged I thank God always for you uh, as we see here what he's encouraging them with that in everything you are enriched by him and in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and we know the gifts that he's speaking about here for the church. What we see here, my friend, this morning, he's encouraging them. Verse 8, who shall also confirm you unto the end. In other words, strengthen you and encourage you uh, uh, that you may be blameless in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. He's encouraging them. As he writes this letter, I, I, my friend, this morning, they didn't have uh, the way of communication in those days. It probably took a little while for this to get to the, the recipients of this uh, letter to, for to get to them this morning. But as he didn't leave them alone. He wanted to make sure they're doing well this morning. <coughs> Let's look over here, book of the Galatians, chapter one. I want to read you another one over here as we look at this here, uh, my friend, this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me, and to the churches of Galatia. 
as we see here. Grace be unto you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, uh, my friend this morning. He always starts his letters with that, uh, the peace of God, he says right there, until you peace and grace, uh, uh, my friend this morning, uh, some of these great attributes. But he says right here, who gave himself for our sins, uh, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and of the Father, uh, as we see here, uh, uh, my friend this morning, encourage it, reminding them. A lot of times we just need to get reminded just who Jesus is and what he's done for us. Yes. We're not awful careful. We'll get in a rut. Right. Yes. Just coming in, going out. God help us. We need to be encouraged. We need to be an encourager. That's right. You see some, someone that's kind of laden and, and, and down. I mean, we need to encourage him. <coughs> going on here real quick. I mean, Paul, he didn't leave these folks alone uh, when he would go through these places of preaching. He wanted to get back and make sure they're doing well. To whom be glory forever uh, and forever. Amen. Listen to what these next few verses here. Because what he said, I marvel that you are soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ into a, another gospel. He's got word that they uh, uh, believe some other uh, uh, message, in other words, which is not another. But there are some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ uh, uh, today. There's one Lord, there's one faith, there's one baptism. Ephesians chapter 4 tells us over there, uh, my friend, this morning. Uh, but there's uh, this Judy. I mean, he had this problem everywhere he went. Uh, these Judaizers would come in after Paul come in preaching grace through faith, uh, uh, my friend, salvation there. And they say, all right, you need to keep the law also. My friend, I, if somebody could have kept the law, Christ would not have come, as we've heard Eddie preach many, many times this morning. But he said, I'm so, uh, 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 that you are so, he said, I marvel that you are so soon moved. So that's why church is so important to take these new converts uh, and disciple them, uh, uh, get them in the Word of God, uh, get them under sound doctrine and preaching this morning in the Word of God. Uh, my friend, they'd get established to that, that the Holy Ghost would reveal that to them. I know I fail that a lot. Not instructing someone to, by the leadership of the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, my friend, this, morning, this word, uh, my friend, today, it's profitable. He tells us, Lord Timothy. But we see right here uh, what he's saying. He says, but though we, listen to this. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preached another gospel unto you, that uh, which we have preached uh, unto you, let him be accursed. There is no other message. There is no other gospel. It's salvation uh, by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said it himself. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man coming to the Father but by me. So we see here like what he's just saying. Paul, he's right to him. He's heard this, uh, what's happening. And, and he, he tells them uh, there is no other gospel. What I've preached it to you, it's saying. It's saying. It's the truth this morning. As we see here, go we'll here to Ephesians real quick. Too far to go this morning, but we just want to go of what the Lord has us to do this morning. Now, as we look at this here, Paul right here, and as we see here, he's trying to, he told Barnabas, he said, hey, let's just go check on them, see how they do there in chapter 15. He says here, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, chapter 1, verse 1. By the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be unto you and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heaven and places in Christ. I mean, encouraging them this morning, remind them according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him and in love. Uh, my friend this morning, tell them right there, and he says right here, having predestinated us to be adopted to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. He's wanting us to be conformed to the will, his will and to that image this morning. Uh, to the praise and the glory of this uh, grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. 
in whom we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So we see right here what he's just saying to these folks here in Ephesus, reminding them uh, of my friend this morning uh, just what God has done for them, uh, how he wants us to be conformed to his image uh, and not be to, uh, conformed to this world, but be transformed uh, by the renewing of your mind. So we see here what he's just preaching to them. Philippians, let's look at one more real quickly here in Philippians. Chapter 1, as we see here. Paul, uh, uh, my friend, he was a man on a mission. He was a man on a move this morning. Uh, he wasn't just set back down here at Antioch. He was called to preach the word to all uh, of the world this morning. Uh, and he, he was going to feel, feel that uh, uh, whatever it took. Paul and Timothy, uh, uh, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and the deacons, Grace be unto you and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon, uh, upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you and making requests with joy. Uh, he's telling me, I'm praying for you always. I'm thanking God always for you this morning as we look at this. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Uh, uh, my friend, there's no quitting place. There's no turning back. Uh, and we'll look at John Mark here a little while or maybe next week <coughs> when we get to it. Uh, this morning, uh, for your fellowship in the gospel uh, from the first day to now, be, uh, be confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, my friend, God's still working on me this morning, Todd. Uh, uh, my friend, I'm old, getting older and gray-headed, uh, but he's still working on me. Uh, uh, my friend, today, I'll never be perfect until I get to glory uh, uh, one day after a while, but I want to continue uh, in the work that Christ has given us to do. And it'll take him to perform that in us today. Uh, we cannot do it in our own strength because this old flesh, uh, we have a lot of trouble with it. Amen, Gary causes himself more trouble than anybody else. But thank be unto God this morning. Uh, my friend, he wants to work a work in us today. He wants to continue to use us. But we need to disciple these souls uh, that get saved and don't forget about them. Pray for that, church, because we're going to have... Revival meetings are scheduled here for the church here at Sweet Gum here at the end of the month. I pray to God some of our children get saved uh, here at church. I pray that there will be a lot of folks get saved, uh, that the church will get revived. <coughs> but church, we need, to be, we need to be willing to be used. You are the light of the world. These children, our church children, they're looking up to, 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 to the older one. I mean... And we need to encourage them. We need, they need to see something in us, church, that they'd like to do, that they'd like to, that they'd desire to have. Where, where would Sweet Gum be in 10 years from now? Ask that question. If we just sit down, let somebody else do the work, and don't do our part. Yes, we all have a part in it. It may just be faithful <coughs> Sunday night, Wednesday night, Sunday morning. Faithful to be, <coughs> faithful to be, faithful to lift these up that's weary. Where would Sweet Gum be in 10 years from today? So think about it. As we look back over here, in chapter 15, book of Acts. As we look back over here this morning, Paul, he's getting ready to set out on his second missionary journey. He's, he's told Barnes, he says, hey, let's go. Yeah, we, we just can't sit around here. God's called us to preach the word. We're going to preach the word. We're going to try to evangelize the world. But we see right here, as what his, his second missionary is, Journey's getting ready to start. If you look at it, and I and I and I looked at it, and, and I, I I even got my ruler out, and I measured the miles that this second journey was going to be. Eighteen hundred or some miles. He didn't have no jeep or truck to ride in. The first part of this second journey is going to all be on foot. 
the latter part of the return trip will be by ship. But we see right here, Willems had head out from here to Los Angeles or somewhere on foot preaching the word of God. How many would raise their hand? Paul, I mean, he counted everything. I mean, he was probably one of the wealthiest people they was, one of the wisest people they was at that time. But he, he said he counted all was done, all was lost that he might win Christ. He got, I mean, to, when God appears to you, when God uh, uh, calls you into ministry or into a service, uh, it's serious. Yeah. And we ought to be thankful that who am I that you would even ask me to do anything uh, in your name? I mean, but I want to try. Yeah. Lord, I fail you miserably, uh -huh. but I want to try. Do you? Paul, he said, I mean, he, his journey, I mean, this, I mean, all the way back around, you can see over here chapter 18, down there in the latter part of chapter 18, you can see where it comes back to Antioch. All this travel, all these souls that's been saved, all the preaching, encouraging the churches where he's already been, and then establishing new churches on food. Some of the letters that we just read. I mean, read. at this point right here, he hadn't written, written most of them yet. But we see right here how God using him, the heart of Paul, what was in there, what God had put in there. He didn't want to leave it to a stale of uh, my friend this morning, not use that, that God had called him, that gift that God had given him. He's not called everybody to preach. He's not called everybody to teach. We all have a gift. May this to be praise God. Created for his glory. Let us see right here what is he saying. God had opened a wonderful door of opportunity, as we see here, for him, for us to take the gospel up to a lost and dying world this morning. What are we doing? I mean, this world's condemned. What are we doing? I was talking about that in the prior room, talking to a man yesterday. When was the last time that I, when was the last time that you uh, uh, stopped and talked to someone about their soul? God help us. God help us. The Bible tells us where in John uh, chapter 3, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. The, the world's condemned already. For he that believes is not condemned, uh, but he that believes not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the only name of the Son of God. We've got the Son of God. And then it says condem the condemnation that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Men need to hear the word. Uh, uh, people need to hear the word uh, from us Christians that Jesus loves them. That Jesus loved them enough to die for them and pay their sin debt if they just accept it. You can read verse 18, chapter 3 of our book of John. That's what sends people to hell is unbelief. Unbelief. So that's what they need to hear the truth of my friend this morning. Verse 37 38. I'm going to read this again. And Barnabas determined to take with him John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them into the world. Now, if you remember a few chapters back, you can read about this departure there in chapter 13, verse 13, I believe it is. But if you remember a few chapters back, Peter was in prison, locked up amongst the guards, and the angel of the Lord came and laid him out that night. He went to Mary's house, which is John Mark's mother. She was a wealthy, I guess you could say a wealthy woman, because they had the church there at her house. They were all gathered at her house uh, praying for the release of Peter. Uh, but John Mark, I guess what I'm saying is John Mark had a pretty good lifestyle, probably. He was probably pretty comfortable in the lifestyle that he lived. He was wanting to serve the Lord. I truly totally believe that. And we'll, we see here how he was greatly used <coughs> of God, uh, my friend, this morning. But uh, Barnabas, uh, he was wanting to take John Mark with him again, and Paul thought it not good. This is going to be a hard journey. The first journey was a rough, hard journey. Mm -hmm. But much persecution, they even stoned Paul, thought he had him killed. Uh, my friend, this, th this thing is serious this morning. There's some hard work in the, in the gospel if we do what the Lord Jesus wants us to do. And John Mark, he was, I truly believe he was going to do that, but he had a pretty comfortable lifestyle. 
And as we see the first journey, uh, when they landed Dr. Tamfield, yeah, uh, I mean, they're getting, they got off the boat, and I mean, that's several hundred miles of rough travel, a lot of altitude, I mean, some rough, rugged country. And he may have thought, well, I don't know, but he turned back. My friend this morning. And Paul, he's, the ministry, the message, and the way that the, they're getting ready to take on again, uh, he needs some mature, established men for the work. Yes, there's a place, and yes, I thank God that I was given an opportunity when I was young in the faith uh, to grow. And when we get to a certain point uh, uh, in maturity, I'm sure that God can use anybody uh, that uh, he's called, uh, but we need to grow and we need to learn and be established in that. Therefore, when we do go out into the world, we're not so easily uh, uh, removed from the faith as we see we read there, Philip. But we are established in the word and in the faith uh, and in the work uh, that we'll be able to stand. And as we see here, Paul, he's not... Uh, who was wrong? Was Barnabas wrong? No. If you look at Barnabas, he was the one that gave Paul the chance to start with. You remember when Paul went up to Jerusalem, he, he wanted to join with the disciples. They fled. They didn't want to be here because they'd heard of his testimony prior of Saul. But Barnabas, and his name means son of consolation, which is encourager, Barnabas took Paul because he had seen him preach, he had heard him preach, and they introduced him to the apostles. And he was welcomed in. But as we see here, my friend, Barnabas wasn't wrong. I just believe John Mark just wasn't hardly ready for the work that was laid ahead. As we see, and I know the bell's rung, but as we see here on down the road, how Paul greatly loved that man. And used that man. He was useful to Paul in the ministry, as we see. And maybe we'll get into that next week. We'll stop right there. But today, he said, let us go again and see how they do there in verse 36. Don't leave them alone. When they get saved, encourage them, instruct them, and live a godly life before them, that they'll continue on in the faith. Amen.